Hello YouTube, welcome to Race Car Fabrication and Restoration. I'm Ronnie Humphrey as always. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button. Greatly appreciate it. Well, our last episode, we were chasing the oil leak on the Thunderbird back here and we pulled the transmission out. We found out that we think that it was the front seal. We got everything put back together. Headers on it, dry shafts in it, everything's done. We're gonna tackle another oil leak that we spotted on our last episode. That's the main oil tank. We're gonna do the same thing we did to this truck. We're gonna pull the oil tank out, break it apart, clean it out, and put some silicone around that O-ring that's in center of the tank. So it's pretty common. A lot of work to have to do it, but we wouldn't have to get it done because I don't want a car that's leaking oil. So anyway, there you go. Ride along with us. Let's see if we can get it done. Okay, as I was saying, we got everything put back together on the transmission side. This is what I ended up doing, looping this cooler line back just to itself. Got it filled up with grease. I went in and checked the rear end as well. I could not believe it was probably halfway full, so we got it done. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take this belt off. Hadn't done that yet, but I say the exhaust, everything's on it, dry shafts in it, everything's ready there. Now, as I was mentioning, you can see oil dripping right there. And what's crazy is when the car is on suspension, when, when it's loaded, you see all this just grease everywhere, oil, motor oil. But you can see where it's actually coming down here. If you look, as a matter of fact, there's a drop right there. If it can come off. So it's hitting the trailing arm, running that way, and drips down. It's been dripping down on the floor. So we're going to pull this out. I hate doing this so bad, but we're going to, have to pull this out. Unlike the truck up there, we had access through the back of the bed area. We don't on this, so everything's going to come out from the bottom. So we'll drain the tank, get it out, and I dread doing it, but we've got to do it. So let's get on it. Well, first thing we'll do is going to drain the oil tank, obviously. And uh, I got to notice that the plug on the bottom of it was a tool I didn't have. It's a great big hex nut and a reverse hex nut or plug and i didn't have one big enough so i went to that great tool supply harbor freight which is up the road about five minutes and this actually is a half inch uh size allen wrench oh so let's see if we can break this thing loose and Got our drain plug here ready to go, or a drain rather. I don't know where it's gonna run all over the, all over the trailing arm here, but let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, yeah. What a mess. Wow, what a mess. Luckily, whew, my funnel up here was almost about to run over. Okay, we've caught up with it now. So, I'll let that drain down in there. Get a rag here. Man, whoop, sorry. My rag was under my camera holder. Okay, well anyway, it's pretty boring here. So, we'll start trying to take all these lines out and see if we can get her out. Don't get on me, but I know y'all don't like me using crescent wrenches, but I like them because they're convenient. And they work fine if you get them adjusted right. I'll tell you what, we actually may unplug some of these. Let me, let me break open this wire. We actually may unplug a couple of these. Because if I can get them unplugged, Oh, okay. 
that one there had to come out, so we were right on that one. Ah, oh, I tell you, I've been working over my head here for the last couple of days. That's getting old. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we actually can unplug these other three, so we'll do that instead of doing this. So luckily, the one we took out was the correct one. So I'll get these unplugged, and we'll, then we'll get the uh, clamp undone. Okay, now that we've got our heater coils unplugged and stuff, we're gonna, it looks like, I'm not sure how they done this. I've never been on this year model car. It looks like you just take these bolts out right here and then that's gonna allow the tank to give us some slack. And uh, so first thing we get the tank loose with these uh, 3 8 bolts here. That'll get the clamps moved back and then we will see if we can get the hoses off of it. Okay, we got these four bolts out on the plate, support plate. I tell you what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna get them started on the bottom, down on the bottom, but you see the tank is loose. It's gonna get this top line off. I'm going to go in here and put a hole saw into this access box here and down there. I'm gonna put a hole saw so we can start those bolts uh, from the outside because there's no way I'm gonna be able to get my hand there and get to them. I don't know how they did it, but uh, anyway, back in the day, but we gotta get this top line off and we'll drill a, a little bitty hole saw right behind the battery plate there and see if we can uh, get a little easier access. So. Let's raise the car back up, just get the lines off of it, and we should be good to go. Well, you can see we got the top line off. I didn't have enough room in this window to uh, video it, but I want to give you proof anyway. So now we'll raise the car up and get the one line off, and it should come out. One of the interesting things about doing a project like this, I've never worked on this car before, so I don't know how it's intended to work. And uh, you learn as you go. Get this last line off. And uh, and there it goes. Okay, yeah, it's kind of cool learning. Uh, but I'm gonna modify a couple of things. We put this thing back together to make it even easier. Probably fix a loose bunch of oil in the ground here, but we'll soak that up. Okay, that should come out, I hope. And there it is. Wow, what a job. Well, we got the oil tank out. I'm gonna get it cleaned up. And it's not really that bad oily, but we gotta take this joint. Matter of fact, you can see it running out right there. Just how oily it is, see there? So that's why we gotta pull it out. Fix it right, get everything in this car, tip top shape. I had to pull off of that for a minute. Get over my wife. It's got a little project for me. We have a fall fest for our church this Sunday night. And her Sunday school class is the Mary and Martha group. And it's the M&Ms. And she's going to give out candy uh, out of this. I had to put a bottom in here. So I cut a piece of a yellow aluminum that my gracious uh, son-in-law, uh, Heath, had for me. I still got a piece of it. He brought me a piece for the door on top of the Bojangles truck. But anyway, now I got to make a mouth. He doesn't have a mouth. And I'm cutting me out a uh, piece here to put on there. So we're going to see if we can get a mouth made for him and he'll be good to go. My beautiful wife just showed up and this is the bowl she's going to put in there and it will fit. And then I was just going to let the kids put the candy right on the, right on the bottom of the floors while I made it. But <laughs> so why do we need the bowl? I'm just asking. Well, we can put some in the bowl and some around. Okay. <laughs> so in other words, bowls don't be serving any purpose, really. Well, but anyway, well, it'll, okay. It'll I don't. I, I don't want to cover up my beautiful aluminum work. But anyway, let's get on this mouth and we'll see if are we good at making a mouth. I got one of those, a big one. Amen. <laughs> All right. That little project is done with the help of some leftover vinyl. My wife's on me all the time. I never worry about her stuff. Said it has to have a race car number on it, usually for me to work on it. So I did give a little bit of personal character. 
we'll see how long it takes her to notice it. All right, let's get back on the oil tank. All right, now that we're done with the M&M &M project, we're gonna see if we can waste some more brake cleaner here. Maybe using some Pro Glow degreaser on here. All right, we got it cleaned up, and I was noticing somebody had already scribed here. I scribed it a second time, but so you see somebody's had it apart before. But um, we'll go ahead and break this thing apart now. And see, we see what this old ring looks like, and see if we clean up the. I'm sure the inside is clean, but we'll go ahead and check it out anyway. Slam full of oil. I don't know if you can see that. Slam full. So we know, which I already knew it was leaking. Take this side off. Again, slam full of oil. Crazy, we just did this in the front. Oh, put my clamp. We just did this on the truck. Okay, let's see if we can. Oh, that was pretty easy. And there you go. One oil tank. Still got a good bit of oil in it. This is what we're gonna put the silicone in. I'll get this on. So anyway, I'll get this cleaned up and we'll show you here the rest of it in just a second. All right, I thought I'd go ahead and show you how this thing, obviously it's real simple. It's just three pieces to the whole deal. But this O-ring that we're gonna put some seal around, see how easy that comes off? That's it. So, I went in and scribed me a little bit mark so I can get that back to the plate. It only goes one direction, but because uh, it has a notch here in the bottom. I don't know if you can see this or not, but that notch goes right there. So it's only really one way it can go. But anyway, all right, I'm going to get the rest of this cleaned up now and uh, go through a lot of brake cleaner here, and then we'll get it sealed, cleaned up and sealed up and put it back together. Okay, I'll go rinse this out and uh, see if we get some silicone on there now and then put it back together. Luckily, my son came by from work and uh, I was able to get him to hold this so I could go ahead and fix it. So fortunately, unfortunately, I don't have a reel going together, but you saw how it was apart. sure that we I told you about how we had clocked it we made sure we got it clocked correctly and uh, it's within probably a eighth of an inch I'm a little bit off but that's okay so anyway, we're gonna let this set up and dry now then we'll I don't want to put any oil in it until tomorrow I'll probably go ahead and mount it back in the car tonight we'll fill it with them all fill it up with oil tomorrow and then we will uh, see if we can fire the sucker up well I'm so thankful that Ryan my son came over and had he not helped me, we have not gotten this tank in there. I had to get in the car on the other side and try to get the tank in position so we could get those two bolts in down there. 
and I ended up cutting an access hole in the battery box to get those bottom two in. There was just no way to get your hands in there. I don't know how they did it, uh, but uh, with the with the battery box cover, it, it seals everything back up, so we're fine. Like I say, we're not going through NASCAR inspection, just playing with it on track day. So got that done. I actually finally found the depth of the oil, 12 inches from the top, three jugs on a quart for CY2, Kelly Oro number two. So that's good. So we're going to end it here and uh, try to see if we can let this silicon sit tonight. And we'll try to put the oil in it tomorrow and try to test drive it. Hopefully the transmission, everything works. I did get the shifter back in it as well. So uh, I think we are done. We're probably going to work tomorrow, try to get set up, get the thing on the scales and try to get it scaled out. So we'll do that tomorrow. Well, that wraps up another day. Man, I tell you, I'm so glad to have that oil tank fixed. I was dreading that so bad. I appreciate my son coming over so much and helping me on that. I also appreciate uh, Michael Hudson, a real good friend of ours. Actually used to drive a race car for me, a real good race car driver and uh, runs a transmission shop now. So he came over and helped me on the transmission yesterday. And of course, Buddy's always a good hand to have around. We'll see you next time on Race Car Fabrication and Restoration. God bless you. You take care.